are pleased to introduce your new manager. Hello everybody and welcome back to the first episode in my first FIFA 23 career mode where we're going to be playing as Andrea Pirlo in charge of his former team New York City FC. If you're not too into the MLS, don't worry, I don't think we'll be doing too many matches in the actual MLS. We're going to be heading to Europe as soon as we possibly can, but I thought this was a really good way to start and introduce you guys to both the MLS, Andrea Pirlo's career, and talk a little bit about the MLS. We're going to be trying to play this career mode as realistically as possible. In the background you've seen, we've just signed Josh Sargent from Norwich City for a couple of million and also Jordan Sabachu. He's going to be our main striker up front. You can see here he's a bit of a beast, although he has very skinny arms. But Jordan, as he likes to be called, is going to be leading our charge, where we're hopefully going to win at least the MLS Cup. The first thing, of course, in any season is pre-season, but I'm going to use this to try and explain the MLS official rules that we're going to be following in this save. We're only going to be allowed 30 players. This means only 30 players can play at least one match every single year. We're going to have 20 players on less than £5,000 a week, with two players under 24 from any nation on any wage, and eight players of any nation on any wage. Some of our best players are already in the second category, but we've included the people like Teles Magno. We're going to improve them by signing players like Josh Sargent and Jordan Sabachu. But let's get started straight now. away with Andrea Pirlo's first press interview. It's a big game he's got coming up. His debut match is against LA Galaxy, an away match in California. It's going to be a tough one, of course, LA Galaxy being another one of the league's most supported teams. You can see here it's a rainy day in February, as you would expect in California. But with a licensed stadium, a big ambition and some new signings, it was really important that New York City got off to a good start. Jordan Sabachi would be starting up front, but Teles Magno on the left was the key man to look at. He's known for his trickery, he has five-star skills on FIFA, and you can see him pulling off some step-overs before pulling it back for Jordan Sabachi to score his first goal for New York City after just 15 minutes. Throughout this season in the MLS, I'm sure you're going to see a lot of Morales, you're going to see a lot of Teles Magno, and you're going to see a lot of Josh Sargent. But it was Morales who managed to smash a ball in after just 22 minutes, giving New York City an almost undeserved easy 2-0 lead after just 22 minutes. You can see the amount of power he got on the ball there, reaching 112 kilometers an hour before nestling in the top of the net. Don't think the LA Galaxy are going to lie down and take a loss that easily though. You could see after 30 minutes they began to press higher up the pitch. In fact, LA Galaxy had a really good chance after 33 minutes. Joe Velic really should have scored that one-on-one -on -one and made it at least 2-1 going into half time. However, after half time, the onslaught continued from LA Galaxy. Jovelic again ran with the ball out wide and did some trickery, getting into Grand Sir, who pulled it back to Brugman, who narrowly pulled his strot just wide. It was a couple of warning shots here from LA Galaxy, but it was actually New York City who would have the next good chance. Morales could have got a second, but he hit the post, and Sabaccio managed to slip when it looked like it was easier to score. Morales did get the ball again, have another long shot, but this time it was palmed round. No woodwork required. Josh Sargent finally made his debut, with Teles Magno, the danger man on the left, coming off for the new signing. Sabachi was playing really well, Teles Magno was as well, so it was really key to get Josh Sargent into the game wherever possible. Sabachi showed the amount of physicality he had there, holding off a defender, and he really should have sealed the game to be 3-0 in the 89th minute. However, LA Galaxy would have one last attack. With the clock expiring with the two minutes of added time being played, just after the referee should have blown, they managed to blast one in past Johnson to deny a clean sheet. However, LA Galaxy wouldn't have time to mount a comeback and that's how the game would end. 2-1 and a winning start for Pirlo's career in America. Next up was another away game. This time it was an away match in Canada rather than California at the home of the Vancouver Wildcats. Now they've had a good start. They got a win in their first game and it looked like they were going to be pressing for the early advantage there with a good shot after just 20 minutes. You could see that New York City couldn't quite get their foot on the ball. Jano Bikel and Kubas were dominating in midfield and some good passing plays saw Cavallini manage to slot one straight past Johnson to make it 1-0 early in the first half. Teles Magno tried to do some trickery but he couldn't quite get past the defender. He let one run through to Morales and Jordan Sabaccio had another chance very similarly to how he scored in his first game. 
Morales eventually had the shot, but it was a weak one that was easily saved by the Vancouver goalkeeper. A few people out there might remember former Scottish wonder kid Ryan Gould and he actually currently plays for Vancouver and he was instrumental in the next chance for the Whitecaps where Cavallini did a nice volley that was thankfully saved by Johnson in the New York net. Next up was an attack this time for New York City. It looked like Morales could have got Sabatio away but it was a very very close offside call. You would imagine he would have scored the one on one to equalize but we'll never know because it was very marginally offside. Next up was a long throw to Sabatio and Morales had another chance this time managing to slot it into the top of the net before doing a crazy weird bird plane dance. You can see from the replay that he was 16 meters out when he hit it and how it nestled just past the hand of the Vancouver goalkeeper. Sabachi was instrumental in the next chance as well, passing out to Magno who did a roulette against absolutely no one before Sabachi played it through out wide and it could have gone in at the near post but Rodriguez only found the side netting. Just after half time, Vancouver had a crazy throw where a player got bounced all the way off to the side of the pitch. But this did work in their favour as the ball managed to fall to their striker Cavallini yet again and he managed to restore Vancouver's lead and make it 2-1 yet again. The Argentinian striker was again instrumental in their next attack as was Ryan Gould and Gould managed to slot it past to make it 3-1, a comfortable home advantage now for the Whitecaps. With the game looking like it was fizzling out, in the 85th minute that was the next time that New York actually managed to have an attack. Josh Sargent got the ball on the edge of the box before playing it through to the youth player Campbell but his shot was easily saved and the game would continue. With only a few minutes left, Ty Bear got through and managed to make it 4-1. In the end it was an easy win on paper for Vancouver but a lot of the goals were fairly simple or from mistakes of New York City players so we can't be too disheartened and if we managed to tighten up at the back we probably could have at least got a draw in this match. One final chance was the long shot straight from kickoff from New York City. As amazing as it would have been, unfortunately it didn't go in and that's how the game would end. Next up was the first match at Yankee Stadium. Of course, a baseball ground adapted into a football pitch is where New York City have been playing their games recently and they were playing against another Canadian team, this time against Montreal. Try not to spoil the game too much, I don't think this was a very eventful match. But the first clip actually comes from early in the first half, after just 7 minutes when Montreal were on the attack. They managed to play it into the box before a defensive error saw Johnson perform a good save to keep the score nil-nil. Nothing happened from the corner and nothing would happen for another 10 minutes, when a long ball forward by New York City was easily intercepted. Wanyama in midfield played it out to Johnson, Johnson to Piete, Puyoto managed to turn and it was another good save from Johnson. With half time coming and passing it was time for New York to have the next and only other attack of the half. So they managed to get the ball out of their feet and it was a good volley again from Morales. What a nice finish that was to give them a lead at home. The Yankee Stadium was roaring and with the potential of a first home win on the cards the game was ticking down towards the end of the match. However Wanyama had something to say about it, a couple of quick passes is all it took for Vancouver to manage to get the equaliser and that's actually how the game would finish. Nothing else really happened in the match other than those two goals and it would end up with New York City 10th in the Eastern Conference. With only the top seven going through to playoffs in each conference, New York City did need to improve if they wanted to play the likes of LA Galaxy again in the finals. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and hopefully you'll subscribe to see more like this and like the video if you enjoyed it. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you soon for another video. Thank you and goodbye.